So one of the things we did in the last video was we included this kind of expression as our what we called our conditional statement. Now how a conditional statement operates is basically it's going to look at one portion and the second portion. And what we were basically saying is given some day, let's say for example today. Does, well, we'll just say, uh, does that equal seven? Now, <clears throat> that date, this portion right here, this is what was going in here. But all of a sudden, you see we have this month function, month, appearing. And we can think of it as almost the equivalent of 7 1 2015 inside of here. Now, what this function does, if we think about functions again, is it's basically going to take in some parameter and give me some output, which in this case is going to be 7. Then what we do is we look and see on the other side of that equal sign, does 7 equal 7? If it does, this is regarded as true. If, say, for example, we change this, let's say instead of 7, 1, we're now dealing with 8, 1. Well, we extract out the 8, and I'll actually change colors for that. Let's say it's 8, 1. And that gets extracted out. So I get an 8 here instead. Well, 8 does not equal 7, so it becomes false. Now again, if we think about how the if statement operates, an if statement operates in the sense that it's going to take this conditional statement, have something for if it's true, and have something for if it is false. In this case, if it's true, we want to print out the word yes. If it's false, we actually print out a blank line. Now, why is this important? So one of the things we can do with our conditional statements, these guys, is we can actually add more in. We can actually include some logic functions. So some of those functions are, say for example, we have something known as and. And we also have something known as or. So how these functions operate is sort of like an if statement. Sort of. Very sort of. They take in conditional statements. But here's where they differ from that if statement. Not only do they take in one conditional statement, they can actually take in multiple conditional statements. And it's really up to you how many to put in here. If you want to put in 20, cool. If you only want to put in two, cool. It just goes on forever. So if these things are so similar, why do I have two of them? Well, here's where they are a little different. The AND function, for example. The AND function operates that it's going to look at every single one of these conditionals. Remember, a conditional is going to be a true or false statement. Now, what AND does, AND produces, produces a true or false. It only will produce true if all of these are true.
So this has to be true. This has to be true. If I have another conditional, it also has to be true. If at any point in time I run into an, a false conditional, then the AND function returns false. Now, this is a little different when it comes to the OR function. The OR function works, again, same way. It produces true or false. However, instead of it being that all my conditionals have to be true, just to match the colors, or, oh, give me a second, zoomed a little far out. There we are. Ors only have, are true, ors are true if any, any of the conditionals are true. So only one of these has to be true. This one would produce a true false. This one would produce a true false. If, say for example, this was true and this was false, the or is still going to produce a true outside of it because, again, only one of them needs to be false. If they are all false, then it will be false.